السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Welcome to another live episode of the Gems of the Heart where we learn how to purify our hearts with the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, by talking about the names and attributes of Allah and this is part of a long journey and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and to give us the ability to fulfill that journey and that is to look into the deen of Allah from the very beginning of matters of belief and the pillars of Al-Iman till uh, we reach the rulings and the halal and the haram and the manners and so on and this is all means to purify our hearts so it's basically our entire life and adopting the deen of Al-Islam and everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to do and every action that is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it definitely has its effects to purify the hearts. And we've been talking about the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as part of talking about the belief in Allah. That this is the first thing, this is the most important thing of how to purify our hearts by believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if a person, his heart is contaminated with disbelief, with associating partners with Allah, there's no goodness in this heart. A person can do all kinds of good things, physical actions, uh, being kind to others and so on. But the heart is corrupted by being forgetful away from the purpose of one's life. The heart is corrupted by associating partners with Allah. And that's why we need to have that purification of the heart to be the best of all other human beings by being worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being kind to others and so on. We talked about many other names and attributes of Allah. And the way to have these names and attributes of Allah to benefit us and to make us among those who uh, really benefit and purify the hearts, we have to have the proper belief in them. We have to learn, you know, the, the text that are mentioned about these names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we have to, to act according to these names and attributes of Allah to have the effect of it in our life. One of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the name Ad-Dayyan. The name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ad-Dayyan. And the meaning of Ad-Dayyan, the one that... Uh, punishes and rewards the people in the day of judgment and in this life. The one that according to the deeds of the people, he would give them the recompense or the rewards. Everything is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala established and mentioned in the sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, and one of which is the hadith of Abdullah ibn Unais radiallahu anhu when he said he heard the Prophet sallallahu saying that the people, the meaning of which people will be gathered in the day of Al Qiyamah. People will be gathered in the day of judgment. Uratan, uh, Ghurlan, that means they will be naked and they will be uncircumcised. And uh, they asked the Prophet about a word that the Prophet said. He said, Buhman. So they said, O Messenger of Allah, what is Buhman? He said, The Prophet they have nothing with them. And then they will be called by a voice. They would hear it from near. A voice will call them. And this voice, it's not coming from a distance that they have to listen carefully or so. It comes from very, ne you know, very near to them. So the call will be, Ana al-Malik. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say, I am the Malik, I am the King. Ana al-Dayyan, I am the Dayyan. And the Dayyan here again, it means the one that rewards, the one that punishes, the one that recompenses. And then it would say, وَلَا يَنْبَغِي لِأَحَدٍ مِنْ أَهْلِ النَّارِ أَنْ يَدْخُلَ النَّارِ وَلَهُ عِنْدَ أَحَدٍ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ حَقٍّ حَتَّى أُقْصَهُ Which means, there is no one from the people of the Hawfayr will enter the Hawfayr and he has a right or a wrongdoing or injustice that he has from the people of Jannah till the qisas, till the equal retaliation of punishment will be achieved. Meaning, we know that the people in the day of judgment are either in Jannah or in the hellfire. And the people of the hellfire, you know, they are going to be in the hellfire. Disbelievers, for example, you know, they will be among the people in the hellfire forever. But sometimes in this life, a believer would treat a disbeliever unjustly. And that's a sinful act. What happens to that disbeliever in the Day of Judgment? He doesn't get his right back and he died and he did not get any, any justice in this life. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being a dayan being the one that rewards and punishes no way injustice will continue to be there and meaning a person would prevail with injustices that he committed or oppression that he did either that person is punished in this life or he repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and take care of it in his life or in the day of judgment it's not going to be cancelled or om omitted because uh, the one that was oppressed was a disbeliever was someone that would enter the hellfire anyway so let's just add this on him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being a dayan that nothing is forgotten so even the one that is in the hellfire he will get his rights and he would get his revenge from someone from the people of Jannah if that person of Jannah had committed you know oppression against him and so on so uh, at dayan and this is a word that we probably heard it many times when we're reading the Quran and one of which is the deen the word deen itself one of the meanings of the deen which is translated as religion is basically the reward or the punishment and that's one of the day one of the names of the day of judgment Maliki Yawmiddin that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of the day of a deen what is the meaning of Yawmuddin it's the day of al jaza the recompense this is the outcome of one's actions this life we do deeds we do things there's no real recompense for our actions right and that's why those who seek rewards in this life this is not the place to have the rewards yes there are rewards and punishments of one's actions but this is a way to remind the believers this is a way for people to repent to Allah uh, for people to be steadfast on the deen of Allah but the real recompense is in the hereafter why because it's the everlasting ones and that's why when a disbeliever or disbelievers are punished in this life if they still alive that means this is a form of mercy from Allah for them for them to see the truth for them to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if a person is afflicted by a trial or calamity in this life it is not necessarily that this is a punishment from Allah because a person is still alive he can still repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but the real recompense is the one that stays forever because as we always a person can always repent to Allah if a person did all evil in his life and he brought the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon him and then he repented to Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful he's the most forgiver subhanahu wa ta'ala so it's all about the nature of this life versus the hereafter the real recompense is in the hereafter but also in this life Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he's not unaware of what people do and the worst punishment and this is a meaning that we keep on repeating uh, over and over again because it's not something that you would see or, or, or feel in this life this is something that you would get to know in the revelation from Allah as always the question is who is the worst punished individuals individual on the face of earth it is not the one that gets striking by a, a lightning or the one that get a, a disease that is no cure to it or whatever there is or the poorest person on the face of earth the worst punishment is for the hearts to be sealed and not to see the truth for a person to continue to be in that state of disbelief till the moment of death for a person to continue to be in the state of sin till the moment of death that's the worst punishment that can happen to a human being on the face of earth it's very clear and obvious why because when a person dies in that state we know the affairs how the, what happened to the people in the hereafter but if someone repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that person has been chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be guided to receive the mercy of Allah to receive the forgiveness from Allah that's why when a person finds himself repented to Allah a person should be grateful to Allah there is no better favor from Allah better than someone to repent to Allah from disbelief to be a believer from sins to be a repentant slave to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, why because of these facts and that's one, something that we would see clearly in the Quran and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Maliki Yawmiddin and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we look into the verses of the Quran we would find many of the verses of the Quran that talks uh, about this you know talks about the fact that the punishment and the reward is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it doesn't have to come in the meaning of a dayan or you know uh, things like this but even linguistically when uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about Yusuf alayhi salam that Allah that we, we would not take you know the brother of, of Yusuf fi deen al malik you know in the religion of the malik it's not the religion of the malik meaning in the obedience of the malik in the ruling of the malik 
and that's why Malik Yawmiddin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of the day of recompense. And the, the, the who is the one that is supposed to be obeyed because the hukm and the ruling is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How this life is governed is by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody can go away or outside the realm of the uh, power of Allah. Everything and everyone is under the power of Allah. Nobody can do anything, cannot do anything except by the permission of Allah. So we have sunan and ways that govern this life. And nobody would be able to escape that. And that's why when disbelievers, they disbelieve it's under the permission of Allah. When a person commits a sin, it's under the permission of Allah. For to fulfill the purpose of this life, and that is to, to have believers and disbelievers, for people to choose to be believers, to be, to be bestowed the favors of Allah, and for people to choose to be disbelievers, to receive the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, the, you know, this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about the, the disbelievers in Surah al safat verse number 53, uh, that the, the disbelievers, they argued when the messengers of Allah are uh, inviting them to the truth, and that's the da'wah, inviting them to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, and giving like tidings and warnings that in the day of judgment, you will be asked about everything you did in this life. You're not going to be left to do whatever you want in this life, and then you die and the matter is over with. No, there is a day of judgment. Hereafter, everybody will be brought to the justice of Allah, to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why this is the time when a person needs to repent to Allah and to be guided to be upon the truth. They said, you know, the disbelievers, that They said, when we die and we become, uh, you know, dust and, and bones, that's the same root of the word addayan. Madinun comes from the same root. Madinun that means we will be questioned, we will be reckoned, we will be rewarded and punished. You know, and this is, you know, they used to say that in this world, right? And this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned as the verses took us in the hereafter and how the believers, they were rejoicing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them among the people of Jannah and how the disbelievers, they used to say that to them in this life and how when they said, let's look where what happened to them, and they would see them in the hellfire. That statement took them to the hellfire. That's a, this action that made them in the state of disbelief was the reason for them to be among uh, the people of the hellfire. The Prophet والسلام, and this is a very serious matter. That's why when we talk about religion, you know, uh, we talk about mercy, we talk about love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we talk about good manners. This is all beautiful meanings, of course. But see, the, the, the reality of the matter of this life is there are evil. Uh, we have rights that we observe towards one another. And we cannot hide this. You know, life in itself is a struggle, is a challenge. And people, they abuse one another. And there are rights that has to be observed, whether it's to human beings or to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has the right upon us to worship Him alone. So when someone doesn't worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that person did not fulfill the rights of Allah. That means he will be recompensed accordingly in the day of judgment. After the matter is made clear. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveal books and send messengers for people to be obedient to Allah. And if people do not observe that and they disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they don't repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before they die, then there is recompense in the day of judgment. Or if, or if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything is by the will of Allah. But the point here is this life and everything we do Every relationship that we are in, every transaction that we are upon, there are certain things to be observed, it's not to be taken lightly. And the Prophet ﷺ said in the authentic hadith, لَتُؤَدُّنَّ الْحُقُوقِ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهَا That you would definitely fulfill the rights to its people. We can look at this entire life that we live in as rights upon us. We have the right of our own selves. Our self has a right upon us, which is to save ourselves from the hellfire and to make ourselves among the people of Jannah. Yourself have a right on you that you need to take a rest. For example, you should not spend the whole night awake in ibadah, for example, or anything else because you need to take a rest and so on. There is rights of the parents that we have to observe. There is the rights of the father, the rights of the mother, the rights of the brothers and sisters. And these rights doesn't have to be only when they're alive, but also when they pass away. There is the right of the wife, the right of the husband, the right of the children, 
the rights of the neighbors, the rights of the people in the streets in general when a person is walking, when a person sits next to someone, there are rights to be observed, you know, and, and it goes on and on. And people in the Day of Judgment, you might see someone and you might say a word or you might do something and you never see that person for the rest of your life, but it's already recorded. And if you hurt it, someone, if we hurt someone with a word and that person will never see him again, we will see them in the Day of Judgment. The Prophet ﷺ said that al -huquq ila ahliha. You would definitely, by Allah, you would fulfill the rights of others yawm al -qiyam, in the Day of al -qiyam. See how the statement is that you would fulfill the rights of others in the Day of Judgment, meaning any fault or any deficiency with regards to the rights of others, it's not going to be omitted. It's not going to be forgotten because you forgot it because you did it 20 years ago or something like this. No, it will be fulfilled in the Day of Judgment. And the Prophet ﷺ said to the extent of which that people will be حتى يقاد للشهادة uh, the, the, to the extent of which that the, the hornless uh, goat or sheep or so or animal will be given its rights from the share or the goat that has horns because they fought with one another and one hurted the other and one died for example and these are animals they're not responsible for their actions but to that extent that there are two animals one was treated with oppression from another animal they would revenge from one another in the Day of Judgment so that no injustice whatsoever would ever prevail and then they would be made to be dust and this is where the disbelievers would wish that they were uh, dust when they see the, the animals they became dust and the human beings are not going to be dust so for the human beings they have to fulfill the rights otherwise they will be brought to the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Day of Judgment and if you can imagine that for the smallest thing, this is something that is not going to be forgotten or omitted. So how about then the major things and the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to observe, especially towards one another and so on. So it's better to be in this life and uh, to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to witness the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us before the Day of Judgment. And this is the meaning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ad dayan and, uh, and this is the, the meaning of everybody will be brought into the justice of Allah. And that's why the Day of Judgment is 50,000 years long. Nothing is going to be omitted when it comes to the actions. How many actions of injustices have been on the face of earth? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just. And every single person, no one would enter Jannah with the slightest amount of injustice upon him or sins. People have to be purified, either to be purified in this life or they will be purified in the grave or the barzakh or the transition between this life and the after or in the day of judgment uh, or uh, you know before entering the jannah and so on and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he talked about the people in the day of judgment there are basically two groups as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa yawma taqumu as-sa'a yawma idhin yatafarraqun in the day of al-qiyamah the hour when it's established people will be separated and how they be separated based on what? Based on their nationalities, on their color of their skin, as usually people are separated in this life, they will be separated according to their religion, according to their obedience to Allah. As you see, فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ فَهُمْ فِي رَوْضَةِ يُحْبَرُونَ As for those who believe and did righteous good deeds, they will be in gardens and they would have rejoicing and so on. وَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا And as for those who disbelieved and denied the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَلِقَاءِ الْآخِرَةِ And the meeting in the hereafter فَأُولَئِكَ فِي الْعَذَابِ مُحْضَرُونَ They will be in the punishment and they will be present there. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is at dayan He is the one that would, you know, the recompense and the reward and the punishment is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, there is the, the verses that really bring the fear of Allah. That when a person sometimes recite them, a person might feel that there is no hope whatsoever, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. Like in Surah Al-Zalzala, how the last two verses of Surah Al-Zalzala, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرَ يَرَى وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرَّ يَرَى These verses can give no hope for nobody if a person only reads them like this. If you do the, uh, the, the mustard seed weight or the atom weight of a good, you would see it. And if you do an atom weight or a mustard seed weight of evil, 
you would see it, meaning in the day of Al Qiyamah. If we just focus on this, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ There is a condition, there is anybody that would do the weight of a mustard seed of good, he would see it. وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرَّ يَرَ Whoever do the weight of a mustard seed of evil, he would see it. And that's a very, it's a very scary thing. But this is the reality of this life. This is the attitude that we should have in this life, that nothing is going to be omitted or escaped or whatever there is. You know, people, you know, they think this is the matter is because it's, they don't see the effect of it in this life. This life is not the Yawmuddin. Yawmuddin is not here. Yawmuddin is in the hereafter. A deen is recompense, is reward and punishment. So, uh, and also it answers many other questions of the people. Sometimes people, they say, how come so many evil people, they do whatever they want and they kill so many and so on and we don't see any justice being served against these individuals. Who said that the ultimate justice is going to be served on the face of earth? It doesn't work this way. It's in the hereafter. And that's why there is hereafter. It's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this life. And uh, for people to see, and that's you know, something that a person, when he reads the Quran, he would see that very clearly. And uh, therefore, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we read these verses, you know, what then makes it easy for the believers is the repentance. When you repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a person would not see the evil that he did. He would be among the people of Jannah. And that's why the importance of repentance, you know, and uh, the, if it's, if it's by the, the weight of a mustard seed, you know, this is how the balance of the deeds will be. And that's why there are people of Al-A'raf, they will be between the Jannah and the Hawfire. These people on the Araf, on a high place between the Jannah and the Hawfire, it was said that their bad deeds and the good deeds were evened out. Can you imagine when the balance is by the weight of a mustard seed, uh, the good deeds versus the bad deeds, and these people, they had exactly the same weight. That's the justice of Allah. That they will be in the, midst, in the middle between the Hellfire and the Jannah. And they would see the people of Jannah and they would see the Hellfire. Allah knows best how long they, they will be there. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by His mercy, they would enter Jannah. But it's a scene to show the justice of Allah. Even the weight of a mustard seed. That's how the effect of deeds. That's why when a person gets to know these names and attributes of Allah, we won't waste our life in nonsense. Let alone to waste it in sins and disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Talk about this meaning and about the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at Dayan and continuing with that after the break and your questions after the break. Pray, please wait for us inshallah ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah wa ba'd. We continue inshallah ta'ala with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at Dayan. The names of Allah, we cannot really fulfill its rights by explaining it in a way that uh, we will just use it uh, or talk about it in one episode. It needs the entire life for a Muslim to reflect. And that's why we're ordered to continuously, consistently read the book of Allah and always revive our Iman, purify our hearts with the words of Allah, the Quran, and the way the Prophet ﷺ. And when we look at these attributes of Allah, of course we see it with all of the different names and attributes of Allah. And we should believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all His names and attributes as mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. That's why some of these names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring the fear of Allah. And some of the names of Allah bring the hope for the rewards of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the balance that we should live our life with. One of the, the names that bring the, fears of, the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on our hearts is the name ad dayyan That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all the recompense will be in the day of judgment. Nobody will escape the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if wrongdoing is being done unless a person repents to Allah, but especially with the rights towards others, you know, a person has to do something in this life. If we wronged someone, if we treated someone with injustice, even with the word of mouth, with riba, with backbiting, with slander and so on, it's not going to be omitted because we forgot it. It's something that we have to do work so that this is omitted from the book of evil deeds. So that in the Day of Judgment, a person does not get his good deeds to be taken away from him. As the hadith about the bankrupt that comes in the Day of Judgment with salah, with fasting, with charity that he gave, but he comes in the Day of Judgment that he had abused this person with his words, that he had hit so and so, he had wounded so and so. 
So these people that come in the day of judgment because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a dayan, everybody will be recompensed or rewarded according to their actions. They would take from the good deeds of that person till there is no good deeds for him anymore. They would take from their own bad deeds and they put it on him and then he will be thrown into the hellfire. Such a serious matter that we have to watch what we say, we have to watch our actions towards others, otherwise the matter is a severe one. One of the authentic hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu that a man came to the Prophet Sallallahu and he sat in front of the Prophet Sallallahu and we should reflect upon this. He said, O Messenger of Allah, I have people that work for me or slaves or so, they, uh, they lie to me. They lie to him and they betray him and they disobey him. So they do all kinds of evil things to him and he would hit them or punish them and so on. So he asked the Prophet ﷺ, how am I with them? What's our affairs basically? So the Prophet ﷺ, he said, you are like this. The Prophet ﷺ said to him in the day of judgment, it will be counted what they did for you. I'm making the hadith shortened here, try to you know, summarize it for you. It will be counted for them in the day of judgment what they did versus what you did to them. Means that you're doing evil to them and they're doing evil to you. It will be counted and if they did more, that means they will be punished. If you did more, this is towards one another. That means you will be punished. If it evens out, then it evens out. So the man wept as a result of this. And this is the difference between the hearts of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ and those who came after them. They took the words of the Prophet ﷺ serious and a statement like this changed them completely. And not that they would hear the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ and they would say, Yes, we should change, we should be good and this and that. And then afterwards, nothing happens. No, so he kept on weeping, sitting by the Prophet ﷺ, weeping. And uh, he would say things to the Prophet ﷺ. So the Prophet ﷺ said something that is very interesting for us to listen to. He said, ما له? What's, what's the matter with this person? ما يقرأ كتاب الله? Why he is so amazed of what I said? He doesn't read the book of Allah. And then the Prophet ﷺ Mentioned the verse, وَنَضَعُ الْمَوَازِينَ الْقِسْطَ الْيَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ فَلَا تُظْلَمُ نَفْسٌ شَيْئًا وَإِنْ كَانَ مِثْقَالُ حَبَّةٍ مِنْ خَرْدَلٍ أَتَيْنَا بِهَا وَكَفَى بِنَا حَاسِبِينَ Which means that we will put the balance of al-qist, the balance of justice in the day of judgment and no soul will be treated with any injustice whatsoever even if it's a weight of a mustard seed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring it. It will be brought to the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sufficient is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as being the one that counts the deeds of the people. So the Prophet, the point here is the man coming to the Prophet sallallahu asking him to show the effect of actions in this life, how it's going to be in the day of judgment. Nothing will be omitted from the actions of the people, especially when it comes to human beings towards one another and the justice and the wrongdoing and so on. And the Prophet ﷺ is amazed why the person finds it something very strange. Doesn't he read the Qur'an? You see how the Qur'an is supposed to affect one's life. When we're reading the Qur'an, things become very clear. It's not a strange thing. It's very clear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ad dayan is the one that the recompense is owned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the justice of Allah would never be omitted in the Day of Judgment. People will be treated by the justice of Allah. So the man... Uh, he said to the Prophet ﷺ, the meaning of which, I don't find any goodness except to let them go. And he said, O Prophet of Allah, I make you witness that they are ahrar. I free them all. He freed all of his slaves. As a result of what he heard from the Prophet ﷺ, there's consequences to this. It's not going to be just I have slaves and that's it. He made them all free. Why? Because he doesn't want to bear this responsibility in the Day of Judgment that they would come in the Day of Judgment with you know, uh, sins that he committed and so on and so forth. It's, this hadith really makes us you know, think and we should reflect you know, uh, how we deal with people. Uh, not just, just talking about servants or whatever. Every single human being in our life. People will get even with one another in the Day of Judgment unless they forgive one another. And that's why we, see, we need to forgive if we want to be forgiven. To pardon one another. And we have to be extremely careful not to harm, not to hurt one another, especially those who are close to us. The word of mouth 
is a major thing. It's a major sin to backbite a Muslim. It's a major sin to say a bad word to revile someone. Uh, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us, وَقُولُ النَّاسِ husna, Speak to people with goodness. It's an evil thing to hurt anyone with any level of hurt whatsoever. All of that is the effect of believing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ad-dayyan. وَالْوَزْنُ يَوْمَئِذٍ الْحَقِّ The balance of deeds on the Day of Judgment is al-haqq. By Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing. Nobody will be treated with injustice, of course. But that's why a person should be warned against being just, uh, unjust. That's why if a person has a choice uh, between being or returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after this life as being oppressor or to be oppressed in this life. Nobody likes to be oppressed, right? But do we really hate also to be oppressors the same way that we hate to be oppressed? This is a very important question that we need to purify our hearts with. Definitely, we should not ask to be oppressed. Nobody likes this, right? But at the same time, we should be careful not to be oppressors to others. Because this is even more evil in the Day of Judgment. Why? Because people will receive the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being ad and the recompenses from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that brings the just the, the, the fact is that this is the benefit of this. When we talk about forgiving and pardoning, one of the great benefits of pardoning is because a person can say, No, I don't want to forgive, I want my rights. Then there's no harm in that person for that person. He has the right to ask for his rights. But there's a, a condition here or there's something dangerous here. And that is you cannot receive or take more than your rights. The slightest amount of extra that it comes to your rights, if you ask for your rights, that makes you an oppressor. So for example, if someone you know, uh, treated someone with injustice, and they go to court or whatever there is, and he wants his rights back. Right? If a person, for example, hit someone on his face, and say the judge, I'm just making an example, you know, then he has the right to hit him back on his face, something like this. But if he would get more than what he deserves as far as the justice is concerned, that means it puts him in the category of being an oppressor. And that's a very dangerous thing. A person started off with this by being someone oppressed, someone that his rights has been undermined, he end up being himself an oppressor. And this is a very dangerous matter as we heard. So that's why this, this life is a serious one. This life is not something that people can do whatever they want and day, pa days passes and years passes and nothing happens. So people think that the evil continue to be evil and they prevail. And those who are oppressed and weak, they continue to be like this and nothing happened to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is at dayan When we look at the world that we live in and we see injustices and oppression and so on, the believers, their hearts are settled. They have the comfort in their hearts that if the rights are not given in this life, there is the Day of Judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not overlook what people do. Everything is recorded. And therefore, people need to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not to compromise the religion, for example, or undermine the orders of Allah because of the fear of uh, oppression or the like of this. You know, this is in all of our affairs. And it's not just in the rights of people towards one another, but also in the matter of Tawheed which is more important in matters of the oneness of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The people of Al-Iman versus the people of Shirk and associating partners with Allah. Uh, they will also come in the Day of Judgment and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh, you know, bring them to the justice of Allah with regards to their disputes. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that in the Quran, uh, in more than one verse, in the ladina amanu wa ladina hadu wa sabi'una wa nasara wa majusa wa ladina ashraku inna Allah yafsilu baynahum yawm al-qiyam. That means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be the judge among these different groups, the believers, the Sabians, the Jews, the Christians. You know, everybody will be brought in the Day of Judgment and people would see who was upon the truth. And this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. So the people of the Tawheed, the people of Islam, the people, those who are upon the oneness of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, also they would have their dispute in the Day of Judgment with the other nations, with the other religions and so on. And people would see clearly that the truth was the religion of Allah, the religion of Islam, to submit oneself to the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us as a result of this to humble ourselves to the orders of Allah. And to remember that nothing is to be uh, forgotten. 
and we, if we go back to the hadith you know, of the, the goats and so on, to that level of justice of Allah, that the Prophet ﷺ, uh, in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad, when uh, Abu Dharr radiallahu anhu said that the Messenger of Allah uh, وسلم, he, taught, he, he saw two uh, sheep or goats, they were fighting with their horns with one another. So he said to uh, uh, Abu Dharr, uh, teaching him, uh, هَلْ تَدْرِي فِيمَ تَنْتَطِحَانِ He said to him, he asked him, do you know why they're fighting and they're you know, uh, hitting each, each other with their horns? So he said, no, most of the time we do not know why the animals are fighting. The Prophet ﷺ said, لَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَدْرِي Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows. وَسَيَقْضِي بَيْنَهُمَا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge between them. Allah knows why they're fighting and he will judge between them. So if this is with regards to the animals that are not responsible for their actions in the Day of Judgment, you know, how about the human beings? So in any dispute, we have to make sure that we understand very well the fiqh and the understanding of dispute. That this life is there for a test for a reason and the disputes would never be omitted. And that's why if people can forgive, if people can pardon, there's nothing more beautiful than this. As long as it brings goodness, of course. And it's not a call that people should be humiliated and forgive at all times without taking their rights and so on. Of course not. And some people, the, the only benefit that they can receive is by being uh, treated with justice if they are continuing to commit evil and so on. And the same thing the Prophet ﷺ, he said that when there are two people, a killer and someone that is killed, <coughs> the, the one that is killed will come in the Day of Judgment dragging the killer. The Day of Judgment is a, you know, is a very uh, clear and, se and severe matter that nothing will be left alone. And he will, be, he will bring the one that killed them in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He would look for him in the Day of Judgment and he would bring him and he would make him stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he would say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ask this person, why did he kill me? And you can imagine what is this scene looks like. And that person would be asked to take from the rewards of that person as much as he wants. Would he leave anything for him? Of course not. And if he doesn't have any, he will put from his sins upon him. But the point here is, you know, someone to live this life, to be free from any implications like this. You know, one of the wartatul umur, as the Prophet ﷺ said, one of the, the, the situations where it makes a person fall into such a difficult uh, dead end or such a difficult thing and, and, and a very problematic issue is when a person has blood in his hands, when a person killed someone, when a person wounded someone. Why? Because in the Day of Judgment, the matter is a very serious one. And this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will deal with people with justice. Nothing is forgotten. And this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu And that's why the hearts of the believers are settled. And it shows that the effect of the belief is that if a person is oppressed, people need to seek rewards from Allah. And people need to, if they are oppressed and treated with injustice and they can't get their rights back, there's the day of judgment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just. If a person have the ability to forgive and to pardon, forgive and pardon. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would reward you in abundance. And if it brings all kinds of goodness, definitely this is what is good. And the reward is given from the same sort of deed that a person do. If you forgive, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would forgive you. Uh, that others also would forgive you and so on. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just. And if you want to deal with people, we should deal with people with goodness and generosity. And we should be very careful not to harm people with a uh, word of mouth, with actions and so on. And uh, to be careful with, uh, you know, that we have to have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, in, in, in the Day of Judgment. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, for example, when he became the Khalifa of the Muslimin and he was praying and weeping, something that people fight over. And when his wife, he saw, she saw him like this and weeping and crying and so on, he said, what happened? A musibah, calamity happened. And he said to her that I've been given this responsibility of the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu And I remember the, the poor and the destitute and the sick and the, and the needy and the, and the hungry and so on. And he kept on mentioning all the types of people that are suffering on earth. And he said, how am I going to answer Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? They will come in the Day of Judgment against him in the Day of Judgment. So the point is that the believers, they always 
witness the day of judgment in their life. They know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a dayan. Everybody would be recompensed with either punishment or reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to have this conscious meaning always present with us by reading the Quran, seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and making sure that when the moment of death comes, we do not incur upon ourselves any oppression whatsoever. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, reward us all and to make us among those who repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته